standing within uh, the uh, constitutional court. That's where we're standing right now. Aluta continua indeed. That's the, uh, the sign that is illuminated above us here as we broadcast you from Constitution Hill. That's where we have been since six o'clock this morning. I think perhaps one of those incredible sites that is a must visit if you have not been here. There's just so much history here and so much that you'll learn from one day of just walking around here and understanding how far we've come as a country. There's just so much housed here at Constitution Hill and where we're standing right now at Constitutional Court. That's just, just one of the, the, the places that, that is found here. Lots of uh, cases are heard here. We heard from Judge Edwin Cameron a bit earlier, who in fact is going to be talking to about 200 students at around about nine o'clock. Uh, I'm sure you can hear the, the, the chattering behind me now. They've already gathered here and he's going to be giving a lecture to them about uh, South Africa's constitution and uh, South Africa, how far we've come. These students are from all over the world, so they are here to, to talk about that. You know, South Africa's constitution certainly has been hailed around the world as being very, very progressive. Uh, we spoke about the fact that we've had four different constitutions within our history here in South Africa, the first being in 1910. And then, of course, the latest was in 1994, the one that we still have now in present day democratic South Africa, uh, where our human rights are at the uh, forefront of absolutely everything that has to do with the constitution. But at the end of the day, there are still many things that South Africans feel that they, they don't have enough of, whether we're talking about water and sanitation, whether we talk about education, uh, whether we talk about adequate housing, adequate health care. These are all human rights and things that fall under this domain and fall under our constitution. So in 1994, if we go back to what South Africa emerged from, we certainly have come a far way, but lots of work still needs to be done. Let's talk to the Human Rights Commission Deputy Chair now and uh, find out how far we have come and some of the issues that are really pressing us in uh, this year of 2014 we find ourselves in. And uh, Preg's governor is uh, whom I'm talking to. She's a deputy chairperson, as I mentioned, of the Human Rights Commission. Preg's good to see you again. Welcome to the program. Very good to see you again and thank you for having us on the program. All right, a Human Rights Commission in a country, how important is it and, and, and what role do you fulfill? Uh, the Human Rights Commission is a constitutional body. It's uh, an independent state institution that's been set up to uh, advance and support constitutional democracy in our country. Uh, it works alongside organizations like the Public Protector, the Independent Electoral Commission, and other Chapter 9 institutions. Um, and uh, our role is really to monitor and to, uh, to monitor how far we are progressing as a country in terms of the realization of rights, in terms of people actually attaining their human rights, um, and ensuring that the state is protecting um, human rights in our country. So yeah. we address both uh, the um, gross violations of human rights, like, for example, uh, cases where there's racist, um, uh, you know, the, uh, the, the cases, for example, at the Ritz University, um, where the students um, uh, film that, that dreadful video a few years yeah. ago, yeah. to uh, the systemic problems of uh, human rights violations in terms of uh, the rights to water, to health, uh, to food, etc. And as the Commission, we regularly report on, uh, we, we look at what is happening in terms of the progressive realization of different rights, and we report to Parliament to ensure that Parliament will use its oversight power to hold government accountable. Yeah, yeah. For many issues, and I know that uh, you were talking, we, we've spoken a lot about water and sanitation and one of those basic human rights, but let's let's now talk a little bit more about something that I know is is, is your focus for now. In fact, yesterday you, you, you had something with regard to food and the, the supplying of food as a basic human right. Let, let's delve a little bit deeper into that. Um, in terms of the right to food, the Commission has been holding uh, meetings in every province across our country. In fact, we've had we've had uh, uh, a focus in every single province across the country on the right to food, and we've um, then brought the meeting together yesterday, where we had people from all our provinces, um, as well as people from civil society, academic institutions, etc., who are working on the right to food. And so, what we did in that meeting was to look at um, what is the access to the right and what we saw so for example the human science research council's findings that uh, over half of 
South African citizens um, lack food security. Sure. That, that's a dreadful number. We also Over have... Over half of South African citizens yeah. lack food security. Absolutely. Elaborate and, and on... If, let, let, let's, let's actually elaborate that. Let's on that. that what do you mean of, by that? That means that people go to bed hungry. They don't know half where Half of South next, Africa goes to bed hungry. They don't know where their next meal is coming from. Um, and they don't know whether they're going to have a meal uh, that day. So, for example, and, and if, you take that, if you take that figure and you break it down, and what we heard, for example, from a UCT study that, that was presented yesterday as well, was that in uh, a wealthy uh, province, you know, in wealthy parts of our country, you would find sometimes that the food insecurity levels are extremely high. Yeah. So, for example, in the Western Cape, uh, the, the UCT study was obviously in the Western Cape as well as in other provinces. But what they saw was that in poor parts of the Western Cape, food insecurity was over 70 percent. So the, the issue of the apartheid spatial geography of our country is deeply entrenched in terms of who doesn't have rights. And so the, the question of poverty and inequality is a really important issue in terms of changing and addressing the realization of rights. Mm -hmm. um, and so what we did in the meeting was not just to look at what the problem is, the extent of the problem, but what's the effects of that. And UNICEF, uh, for example, talked about the fact that in South Africa today, we have actually regressed in terms of the number of children who are stunted because mm -hmm. of hunger. Because of hunger. And that means stunting not just in terms of physical growth, but in terms of cognitive, intellectual, mental yeah, abilities. Yeah. And that's a terrible indictment on us as a country, because if that has gotten worse, it means that we are, you know, we talk about children are the future, children are our future. If our children are being stunted because of the lack of food, then we have to really look at what's going on. And we also heard uh, from many of the, the researchers yesterday that the, South Africa has enough food. South Africa, there's, there's an abundance of food. Yeah. So it's not a shortage of food. It's, and the key questions are who controls food and who has power over food. So we looked at that because we looked at, well, in 2014, we should have made significant progress. We should not be hearing the statistics of the HSRC or uh, UNICEF. Which, which really paint a, a very bleak picture of what has happened in terms of the right to food. Yeah. Where is the food? I mean, that you're talking about, who has the control over the food? Who, who controls the food? If we had to take some, uh, for, for example, if we had to take the issue of ownership of seed. Ownership of seed is really important because uh, traditionally, uh, seed was owned by the farmers who, whether it was a, a subsistence farmer or a big farmer, they would, um, in our country, they would, they would have, the, oh, they would be able to use the seed again and again. They would store seed. They'd be able to use it without buying seed every year. What we've done is we've allowed two global corporations to own over 80% of South Africa's maize seeds. So our, our staple food yeah. uh, is most of our staple food is genetically modified. So, so these are big, big corporations. They're, they're Monsanto and co corporations like that, which are huge. They, they're billion dollar industries. And what, you, what we see is that the rationale for that was that if we had, this was, this was the reasoning that has been put forward, that if you have these big companies, if you have genetically modified seed, for example, that was the way to solve the problem of hunger in our country. Yeah, yeah. And actually what we've seen is that that's failed. That in fact what we've got is the, the, the increase in numbers of children who are stunted, mm -hmm. for example. Um, so the, we've got to revisit that. We cannot be doing the same thing we've been doing forever yeah. and think that that's going to, to change 
I must say, Prags, every time I do speak to you, I, I always get a sense that as, <clears throat> as far as we've come as a country, there is just so much we need to do. Um, it, 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 we've spoken extensively about the water, access to water, sanitation, and I know that that is also a very difficult angle. But now what you're talking about with food and yeah. the fact that half of South Africans go to bed, uh, ex well, go to bed starving or they don't know where their next meal is coming from. Again, this is not the picture that we expected 20 years in democracy. It's not the picture that I think the South African public want 20 years in democracy. What are we doing wrong? Why, why are we not progressing faster? In fact, from what I'm gathering from you, in a way, we're almost starting to regress. Yeah, I, th I, think, I think one of the reasons, one of the big reasons, uh, is that you've got a, a global system which we've entered into, in which things like food and water are not seen as human rights. They are seen first and foremost as economic goods, mm. as commodities to be bought and sold to make the highest profit for those who own the food system. Yeah. And the, it, it, that undermines um, the human rights that are enshrined in our constitution. Yeah. So we cannot have a situation where uh, we enable licenses and, and uh, there was a, an amendment to, to uh, uh, the uh, Minerals uh, Act, which, which was recently passed in Parliament, which says that the issuing of water licenses, of the ability to use water, uh, has moved from water affairs to minerals yeah. and energy. Now that's a real problem because uh, water is a, is a, a national resource. Um, it's, a, it's a commons, it's, it's supposed to be there for everyone mm, to be mm. able to use. So if you actually, if your priority is who's making the biggest profit and it's not about, well, how do we address this problem that we have children who are stunted and that has increased, that we as a wealthy country have uh, figures that are, in terms of the global statistics that UNICEF has, has collated, that we've actually regressed yeah. as a country. Uh, it means that we've got to look at what are we doing, not just in terms of uh, the individual who is trying her best uh, to cook and to grow food. So for example, in Limpopo, yeah. a study showed that whilst there's income insecurity, that means people don't have jobs, paying jobs, they've got food security. Mm -hmm. um, and and uh, the because and the food security comes from the fact that women are subsistence farmers, yeah. and and they're actually taking care of families and communities. So that you know we often talk in our country about Ubuntu, yeah. but actually the people who are displaying that are people who are often the poorest. They're yeah. giving the most and of we, their time. We and need it from a we need it from a higher. Respect. And, and a higher to, place than so that. So how do we actually enshrine the dignity in we, our constitution yeah. from the highest level in Absolutely. terms of our policy choices? Prigs, I, I have to leave it there and I'm so okay, sorry fine. because I think, um, I think you've given us a lot of, if I, if I may use this horrible line after an interview, like there's a lot of food for thought because yeah. I think that that's a, it's, it's a huge problem and I think you've opened our eyes a lot. Prigs, Governor, thanks for talking to us here on Morning Live. Thank you so much and appreciate that. All right, Prigs is the Deputy Chair of the uh, Human Rights Commission here in South Africa, just talking about some startling statistics of uh, South Africans and food security and the lack of food in this country and again a human right, a basic human right that unfortunately is not being met satisfactorily.